Okay, in this video, I'd like to talk about experimental error analysis. And this is something which is the bane of existence of the, of the existence of many physics students or an engineer. And um, I'm just going to try and show you that this is um, very simple in actual fact. And it's not as difficult as people seem to think. And it's, it's very fundamental. It's something you need to be able to do. And uh, if you do it, things will just, uh, you, you'll get a lot, a lot better results of your data, or, or the analysis of your data will be a lot easier to do. So, the first thing I'd like to talk about is physically taking a me measurement and working out your experimental error, okay, or your actual error. So, say I want to measure a length, and just say, for example, I'm going to use a ruler. So, every, every, every time you measure something, you're going to use an apparatus of, of, of some sort, or, um, yeah, you're going to use an apparatus of some sort, or... Uh, you're going to be able to measure it using that, okay? So, if you're measuring a large distance, you might use a meter stick or a ruler. And on the ruler, you might have, we'll say, of course, they're, they're 100 centimeters, so you're going to have it marked every 10 centimeters, we'll say. And at the same time, you're going to have it marked in between the 10 centimeters at the individual millimeters, all right? So, to say, you need to say to yourself, first of all, what is the smallest unit of measurement on my apparatus? All right. So on the meter stick, the small un smallest unit of measurement is one millimeter. Okay. Now that would be you need to put everything into really into the same units. So that it's one times ten to the minus three meters. That is the smallest unit of measurement. So you could say to yourself that every measurement that you make is accurate to plus or minus one millimeter, like that. Okay. And that that would be your actual error. Now you might say to yourself, hold up a second, I can tell if something is between millimeter lines, so as a result I might be able to say it's accurate to 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Okay, but it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to say it's accurate to plus or minus 0. Um, 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3. That's unlikely, because to be quite honest, it's going to be very difficult for you to to cut up the single millimeter spaces into you know tenth of a millimeter chunks. Okay, that's going to be very difficult to do. So in practice, you'll say on your meter stick or your ruler, uh, the smallest unit of measurement you'll have, or the the, the the unit of measurement to which you'd be accurate, will be plus plus or minus uh, 0 0.5 times ten to the three, three meters, so half a millimeter. All right. So that means that every every measurement you make could be bigger. Uh, by this much or smaller by this much. Okay, you're giving an error bar or an area within which you know your your um, your value is correct. So, say for example, you had something else. What other things might you have? Um, let me think of another experiment. Uh, no, no, I don't think actually you need to think about other experiments. I think that that might do. So, say if you pick up a vernier calipers, for example, and on your vernier calipers, you, you often have um, you have kind of a drum. I know this isn't drawn like a drum, but on one side of it, you have a little drum. And you have all little markers down like that, and it's the same with every piece of uh, every every um, every apparatus that you use. You'll pick it up. You'll find the smallest uh, graticule. I think it's G R A T I C U L E. Is that right? I'm not too sure. You'll make the smallest unit of measurement. And if you think, yeah, well, that's as small as I can get it, then that's just fine. So you record it as plus or minus your smallest graticule. And if you can go, if you can say whether or not it's in between, it, you might be able to say it's plus or minus half of your smallest graticule. All right, and that's your actual error. So you would quote all your, your all your readings like as fo as follows. So say if you wanted to, you you had a length, and you knew it was, it was one point two meters. That was the length. It turned out to be one full meter stick plus twenty centimeters. And the next thing you need to do is add on your experimental error. So it's plus or minus zero point five times ten to the minus three meters, like so. And it's common then to have a percentage error. Now I'll tell you why you're going to need it in a moment, but you need to get what percentage of your total of your total measurement is this error. And the way to do that is very simple. You divide your error, excuse me, you divide your measurement, 1.2 meters, by, um, you divide your, excuse me, your error by your measurement. So it's 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. That's going to give you just a, a number between 0 and 1. And to get a percentage, you multiply it by 100. All right, so in this case, I have 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. I divide that by 1.2 and I multiply that then by 100 to get the percentage. In this case, I get 0 0.04 of a percent. All right, that's a very small amount. So I can say that my measurement in this case is 1.2 meters plus or minus 0 0.5 times 10 to the 3 meters, 10 to the minus 3 meters, um, which is 0.04 percent.
100%. So every measurement you make is accurate to, uh, it can be, excuse me, it can be greater or smaller than um, that, that value by 0.04%. Alright, so say if we, if we want to start adding uh, on subtracting or working with, with your units of measurement, okay, our measurements. So say if you wanted to say, say if you had another measurement, 5 meters plus or minus, I don't know, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Alright, so first of all, let's get the percentage accuracy. So it's our percentage error, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 5, multiplied by 100, giving an answer of 0.02%. Uh, and what if I wanted to add, if I call this A and I call this B, if I wanted to add A plus B, well, of course, the answer is just going to be 6.2 meters. The next question you just say to yourself is, well, what is the error going to be on this measurement? Because think about it, you, you made this measurement of 6.2 meters using a measurement of A, which had an error, and a measurement of B, which had an, had an error. So all of these, both A and B, um, they both add or contribute to the error of, of A plus B. And the way to do that, first of all, is it, it, the, the rule is this. Okay, for adding or subtract, SUBT, SUBT or ACT, use your actual error or your actual uncertainty and for multiply or divide or any other operator like that use your percentage error. Okay? And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a moment. So let's let's say, alright, we want to add A plus B and I've just said when you're adding or subtracting you, you, you add the actual error, you add the error because this one is going to be less accurate than either of these two individually. So it's going to be accurate to um, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 so you add the errors and now you need a new percentage so this is the actual error and this is your actual measurement so we, to get, we need to get our new percentage error so it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by the, our measurement which is 6.2 and multiply that by 100 giving in this case an error of 0. 0. Oh, I'll do that again I think it's 2.4 take that back it's 2.4 percent. I'm just going to do that again. I think I may have hit a wrong button. So I said it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by um, 6.2 multiply that by 100 and oh yeah I knew, I knew that was incorrect so it's 0.024 percent. Alright so you can see that it's it's less than this value but greater than this value which makes which makes a bit of sense. Alright so you can see that when you're adding or subtracting, you add the actual errors. But what happens if you want to multiply A times B? So A star B, or A multiplied by B. So the answer there, so you're going to have 5 multiplied by 1.2, giving an answer of 6 meters. All right. Next, you need to get your, your percentage error. Because I said, for multiplying or dividing, you need your percentage error. You add your percentage error. So in this case, it's going to be 0.06%. And now we need to get our actual error. So zero point, we need to get 0.06% of 6 meters. So 6 divided by 100 multiplied by 0 0.06, giving an answer of 3.6 3 .6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So look, when you're multiplying or dividing, your actual errors, after going up significantly, it's much bigger than any of these on their own. Okay, so just to recap, when you're adding or subtracting, you add your actual error, and then you get your percentage error. And when you're multiplying or dividing, you get your, you add your percentage errors, and then get back your actual error. All right, it's very straightforward stuff. Now, the um, it's very important. I, I must say it's very important. So I actually have an example here. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, so. I have an example here from an experiment getting a refractive index using a uh, using spectroscopy. So anyway, or a spectrometer. So we're going to get the refractive index n is equal to sine of a plus d over two. Don't mind what the quantities are. Okay, that that's not important. Times the sine of a divided by two. And in this particular experiment, we got values for a and d. Okay, so we had values of a and d, and you want to be able to get the value for n. Now, as you can see, this, this formula is a bit of a pain. And to get the errors in this formula, you'd have to do the following. First of all, you'd have to go A plus D, right, A plus D, and you're going to get the actual error. Then you would divide, you would get A plus D divided by 2, and now you go for the percentage error. 
Okay, so you divide it, you'd, you'd, you'd have A plus D, you get the actual error, and then you'd get the percentage error. Then you would divide that by 2 and get the percentage error, and then from the percentage error, get the actual error. And then you need to get the sine of that, okay? The sine of A plus D over 2, okay? And I said, if you're doing any other operator, in, in, like multiplying or dividing, once again, you're going to go for percentage error, all right? So that's you keep the you add the percentages and then you uh, you add the well you keep the percentage so it gets sine and I just have the same percentage error as a plus d over two. Then I'd have to get the the uh, the value of a divided by two. So a divided by two. I uh, what am I going to go for? It's, it's multiplying or dividing, so it's going to be percentage error. So you, you add your percentage errors and then you get your actual error. You get the sine of it, okay? And because the sine is going to be percentage error. And finally, you're going to get this quantity divided by this quantity, which once again is going to be percentage error. All right. Now, of course, that is it's very time consuming, and I'm not saying that you you, you in a labs where you'll be doing this sort of error analysis, you, you should be you shouldn't really be doing uh, you shouldn't really be doing um, expressions like this. But this is just to show you that this sort of thing is done. Now, in actual fact, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about um, another way of doing it really, but I'm going to do in another video. A better way of doing error analysis, and it's used. It's used you, or it's you use differential calculus in order to do it. I'm just going to write down the formula. So it's going to be df squared. So that's going to be del um, del f del x one to be squared uh, del x one plus up to del f del x sub n to be squared outside of del x n to be squared. Now that looks like a painful formula. But I'll do another video on that and show that in actual fact that's very straightforward and that will give you a more accurate error analysis than this procedure up here. So just to remind you once more, adding or subtracting, you add your actual errors and then from your actual error you get your percentage error. When you're multiplying or dividing or doing anything like that, you, get, you, you add your percentage errors and from your percentage errors you calculate your actual errors. And it's quite time consuming but um, it's very important all the same. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.